Breaking news. We've just received word that 3D Print General's channel has been deleted. In a cruel twist of irony, it seems that his channel was flying under the radar until he applied for his silver play button, which is the reward you get for reaching 100,000 subscribers. After he applied for the YouTube play button, YouTube basically just looked for a reason to delete this guy's account. They found some violation that happened over a year ago, and they deleted his channel. YouTube isn't what I'd consider a freedom of speech platform. I mean, you can't just say whatever you want on here. I tend to stay away from issues involving weapons and violence and current events. There's been videos where he's printed lower receivers and showed 3D printed pews on his channel. And apparently YouTube takes that stuff very seriously and has removed him from the platform over his community guideline violations. The week leading up to the 3D Print General's channel deletion, he was demonetized and was in the process of removing any videos that might be violating YouTube's terms of service. So it just really sucks because he was trying to go back and get his channel to be compliant, but YouTube nonetheless decided to just chop his channel down and now we have no more 3D Print General here on YouTube. So this really sucks. I mean, 3D Print General has put in a ton of work to make a bunch of educational content and his channel wasn't just about 3D printed pews. It was also about 3D printing basics, product reviews, and educational videos. So if you want to follow Sean's journey as he tries to get started on some other platforms, I'll leave a link in the description below to his Twitter. Regardless of where you stand on his violation of the rules or whether you think he should be making that kind of content in the first place, it just really sucks to see someone who's been making genuinely good videos get taken off the platform. Everyone, please drop an F in the comments section to pay respects to 3D Print General's channel. So remember, kids, don't play with guns on YouTube. In other news, last weekend we had East Coast Rep Rap Festival. This is basically a large community organized event in Bel Air, Maryland, where you can go and show off your 3D printers. It's a great place to meet your favorite YouTubers. I was there last year and met a ton of people. If you have a 3D printing festival in your area, I highly recommend taking a weekend trip to go check them out. It's a lot of fun and, you know, we're used to seeing this stuff online, but actually going to a venue and seeing all these 3D printers in person is just really fun. One of the hottest announcements to come out of this year's East Coast Rep Rap Festival was the announcement of the P.O. Poly Magneto X, which is a 3D printer that gets rid of belts entirely, and instead it's using a linear magnetic motor. So here you can see there's just a bank of magnets, and it uses that to propel the tool head back and forth. Despite the appearance of some novel and really cool linear motors on this 3D printer, the MSRP is quite reasonable and there's an additional $600 off if you pre-order. Now you always got to be careful when you're pre-ordering stuff like this because just like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. In other news, there's been some drama between Bamboo Lab and Prusa over Bamboo Lab's launch of their new 3D print model repository. They're calling it Maker World, but essentially it's a clone of printables where you can upload your files, but they're adding some additional compatibility with Bamboo Lab products. And I'm not the one injecting the word drama into this. Bamboo Lab themselves are calling it drama, according to their latest blog post. So I'll link to this and you can give it a read. But basically they're calling out Prusa for blocking access to their site. Essentially what happened is Bamboo Lab was accessing Prusa's site and has been trying to encourage people to take their models that are already uploaded on printables and instead upload them to Maker World. Now this would be great for Bamboo Lab because one of the hardest parts of getting a model repository up and running is getting the actual 3D models onto the site. They figure by working with creators who are already making models on printables and just taking those models and getting them on the Maker World website, they can bootstrap their efforts to make a functional 3D print model repository. The thing is though, Prusa didn't like Bamboo Lab poking around on the printables website, so they blocked the IP address which essentially stopped Bamboo Lab from being able to access models on the printables website. If you read through this blog post, it's actually really interesting. Apparently they were doing things like uploading bad models to printables and seeing how they handled exceptions when the model wasn't good or it was the wrong file type or something, and they used that to aid in the development of their own website. Additionally, the two websites are visually extremely similar. Apparently they just tried to copy Prusa's website as much as possible. There's been a joke online that it's just green mode printables because they just took the user interface from printables and all the same stuff and they duplicated it onto a new website, but they used green instead of orange, which, you know, that's not that much of a difference. 
Their eventual goal is to make an easy one-click printing workflow where you can browse for models and then click on the model you want to print and it'll automatically send the file over to your Bamboo Lab printer and print it out. Slicing software is notoriously difficult to use and has kind of a steep learning curve, so taking the slicer out of the workflow might offer a better experience to people who are new to 3D printing. Meanwhile, as all this drama unfolds, Ultimaker is sitting in the corner eating popcorn and uh, they just released their own update to Thingiverse. So Thingiverse was kind of the original model sharing website, which is hugely popular and it still has a ton of models on there. But a lot of users, myself included, were having complaints with how slow the website was getting. But with these latest updates, they've updated the user interface and the website backend, so everything is much snappier. So overall, it's nice to see these improvements on Thingiverse. If you haven't checked it out in a while, it might be worth hopping back on there just to see what the new experience is like. The demand for high quality 3D printable models has really increased in the past couple of years. As 3D printing is going more mainstream and there's more users who don't know how to use CAD data, well they're going to need to be able to find models to download from the internet and print themselves. In an effort to encourage people to produce high quality 3D printable designs, the website Thangs, which is another model sharing website, has been offering bounties. And these bounties aren't small. They're offering thousands of dollars to the top 3D file creators. As you can see from this latest competition, the prize pools here are huge. The top four spots get over $1,000. And according to this little information bubble, if you're a new designer and you make it onto the leaderboard, you get a $1,000 bonus. So if you have some CAD skills and you think you have some cool models you can upload, why not upload them to Thangs to see if you can win some of that prize money? Probably the most hyped up 3D printer to be released this year is the Bamboo Lab A1. Leading up to the event, there was a lot of uncertainty about what it would be. However, if you were tuned into this channel, watching this guy, you would have already known exactly what this printer is weeks in advance. Because with my powers of deduction, I was able to figure out that this is probably going to be a low budget bed slinger to really fill out that product portfolio that Bamboo Lab is offering. So remember, if you want to be the first to know about new products, make sure to subscribe to Nathan Builds Robots, the definitive source for 3D printing news. Anyways, in my final A1 speculation video, which came out one day before the product launch, I showed some actual pictures of the product that were making rounds on the internet. The photos were leaked by the next leaker, the next layer, and in a shocking move, when Bamboo Lab found out where the source of the leak was coming from, they excommunicated the next layer. Which is absolutely crazy. I think that's a little bit of an overreaction. Personally, I don't think it's worth cutting ties with someone over a little accident like that. But let me know in the comments below what you think about their decision. Was it an overreaction by Bamboo Lab, or was it completely justified given what happened? Now that the official reviews are out, we know exactly what the printer is. It's a small cantilever Core XY printer with a low-budget version of their AMS system attached to it. It appears to be a really well-built and well-designed 3D printer, so if you're in the market for a small form factor printer like that, then it could be worth picking one up. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check on the pre-order. I think a lot of people were holding off buying a Bamboo Lab printer because they weren't sure what that A1 Mini was going to be. The A1 Mini is really going for that low budget price point. It starts at $299 for just the printer only, and it's $459 for the printer plus the AMS unit. Some people might have found it a little disappointing, and to them I say, there's always the P1S. With its full enclosure and more compact packaging, where the AMS system sits on top of the printer, I think it's a better printer overall when you compare it to the A1 Mini. One thing that really stood out to me in the product launch videos for that Bamboo Lab A1 Mini, in addition to the excellent build quality and silent operation, was the sheer amount of material waste that it produces when you're doing multicolored printing. In a lot of videos, it looked like the waste pile was larger than the 3D printer itself for a small to medium sized multicolored print. So for me personally, if I was gonna pick one of these up, I would just get the A1 Mini without the multicolor edition. But here's to hoping that Bamboo Lab will come out with a less wasteful version of the AMS system. We also have pictures of the unreleased X1E as you can see here, this is the Bamboo Lab X1E. These photos were uploaded to the FCC. Since then, they've been taken down, but I have copies of all of these files because they were public information. And as you can see, it's the same general size as the X1C and the P1S. But what's new on this printer? Basically, they've added a heated chamber, so that should allow you to print with slightly higher temperature materials. Additionally, they're adding a network kill switch to this printer, so that will allow you to flip a switch and disable the Wi-Fi. 
This is really important to people who have network security requirements, and it's really a nice way to address the security and privacy concerns that I expressed about this printer before. Bamboo Labs Slicer, Bamboo Studio, uses a closed source networking plugin, so I would still want to run that software on an air-gapped computer, meaning a computer that has no connection to the internet, but it's good to see that you're getting options here, so you'll be able to get that more secure workflow on a Bamboo Lab printer. It looks like the tool head is exactly the same. It still looks like they're using carbon fiber rods for the x-axis. Also, they'll be using a larger chamber filter, though I would still always recommend having proper ventilation when you're running a 3D printer like this. And this machine is going to have a faster processor, which will make the touchscreen more responsive. Some users had complaints about the touchscreen being a little bit laggy on that X1C. Now, in terms of pricing, I expect this thing to go between $1,500 and $2,500, because that's going to be a good price point to hit for professional users. So overall, not a huge update, but there's some nice little additions there. In an interview with CNC Kitchen, Bamboo Lab CEO Dr. Tao was talking about how the larger Bamboo Lab printer won't be coming out until the X2 revision, so the next generation of Bamboo Lab products. And he assured us it's going to be worth the wait. Well, we'll see about that, and I'm sure there's going to be hundreds of you out there that want to pick one up because... That's the one thing I've been hearing a lot in the comments section is that everybody wants a large form factor Bamboo Lab printer. There's also been rumors about Bamboo Lab developing a smaller Core XY printer, a dual print head printer, as well as an IDEX printer. So we'll see which one of those actually make it into market. Bamboo Lab has a very innovative and active R&D department, so there's a lot of cool stuff going on behind the scenes there. Now, Bamboo Lab aren't the only ones that have been coming out with new 3D printers. One of the printers that I featured on this channel, the Flashforge Adventure 5M and 5M Pro, I gave a very honest and thorough first look at that machine, and I even tore it a new one on camera. For the Adventure 5M non-pro edition, that has an MSRP of $399, which is incredibly affordable and there's a $20 off coupon for pre-orders. Creality has also announced a bunch of new printers, and they're all roughly the same size filling the same niche, which is kind of confusing to me. Here's the Ender 3 V3 SE. Here's the Ender 3 V3 KE, which is the clipperized version of that previous printer. This is gonna be slightly faster, and you can manage it from Creality's Creality print software. Then there's the CR10 SE, you know, I felt like this was a little underwhelming. It's basically a continuation of the Ender 3 S1 lineup. It didn't have the best print quality, and at an MSRP of $460, it's just not price competitive. I mean, you could get the Flashforge Adventure 5M for that price, which is going to be faster and have better print quality. And then there's the Ender 3 V3, which is going to be a Core XZ printer. It's an interesting design. It should be really fast, and it borrows a lot of parts and design cues from the K1 series. Personally, if I were Creality, I would cancel that product and just double down on the Ender 3 V3 KE, because there's no point in figuring out that whole Core XZ kinematic system just for a single printer. And overall, it's not really adding anything to the 3D printing experience. It's just cool, which is reason enough for me to build something, but for a company that's trying to turn a profit, making something just because it's cool doesn't necessarily make sense. All right, and Prusa just released the new firmware for their Prusa Mini and Prusa MK4. This new firmware enables input shaping, which greatly increases the speed of prints. Prusa strategically timed this Prusa Mini firmware update to come out right before the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini came out. And that was definitely a strategic move to try and take the wind out of the sails of the A1 Mini. I actually had a Prusa MK4 in for review. Overall, I was really impressed with the print quality and the build quality of that machine. And the input shaping worked great most of the time, but on some prints, it was kind of having weird artifacts when I turned on the input shaper profile. From a narrative point of view, I think it was really important for Prusa to come out with that input shaper firmware update because it's showing that our printers aren't that much slower than the Bamboo Lab alternative and we're committed to supporting our printers for a long time. There's a lot of MK3s out there that have been printing for five years and they're still going because Prusa supports their products and they continually update them. And we've also got some news out of Elegoo. Elegoo have the Neptune 4, which I reviewed. I really like that printer. The Neptune 4 Plus and Neptune 4 Max are now available for pre-order. Here's the Neptune 4 Plus. The MSRP appears to be $400, which, you know, that's decent. But the pre-sale price of $350, now that's a deal. It's running Clipper, and uh, apparently there's a chip that just says Clipper on it, and that's how you know it has Clipper. The print volume, though, is really nice. 320 by 320 by 385. 
Oof, that's even bigger than I thought it was. Then there's the Neptune 4 Max, which is the big boy. 420 by 420 by 480. That's an absolutely huge printer, and that's a really decent price. I'm using the CRM4, which was provided by Creality, and that's, I think, around $1,000. So this printer coming in at roughly half the price is a tremendous deal. Now the CRM4 is slightly bigger than this printer. It's 450 by 450, but for half the price, I'm willing to give up 30 millimeters there. Also, this comes with an all-metal heat break that can print higher temperature materials, and uh, it's got bed leveling. I mean, it's just a really solid design overall. When I was reviewing the Neptune 4, I did have one complaint about it, and that's that it didn't have a working Wi-Fi module out of the box. I had to plug it in over Ethernet in order to get it on my local network, but the Neptune 4 Plus and Neptune 4 Max have Wi-Fi LAN built into them, so you can just connect them to your network and print with them wirelessly. So this is just a really affordable entry point into clipperized 3D printers. It used to be that you had to install Clipper yourself going through this kind of tedious process and sourcing your own hardware. But if you can get a printer that has Clipper pre-installed for about the same price as what you would have paid anyways, I mean, that's just a great deal. Now we've got the Anycubic Cobra 2 lineup. I tested out the Cobra 2 Pro and I wasn't really that impressed with it. It just lacked some of the build refinement that I was expecting out of a printer at this price point. But they also have a Cobra 2 Plus and a Cobra 2 Max. Anycubic sent one of these Cobra 2 Maxes to me to check out and I'll be taking a closer look at that later. I've been printing with my CRM4 and I really like it after putting some mods into it. But I think one of my biggest complaints about that machine is the print surface that they use. They're providing this polycarbonate print surface and stuff sticks to it way too well. And that thing just completely got torn up on me. Oh my. I think I was printing PETG on it and it stuck too well. I wanna try out this Cobra 2 Max because it's got a PEI spring steel sheet and that should be a lot more reliable. And last but not least, we have the Soval SV07+. Plus. Now we had the Soval SV07 come out a while ago. The launch MSRP they're claiming is gonna be $500, which I don't know, that seems kind of expensive to me. I have one of these to review and I mean, they sent it to me a while ago and then I was like, oh crap, this isn't coming out for a while. I printed with it and it works really well. Um, my only complaint about it is it's kind of ugly. I mean, just look at it. This print head is... I appreciate your time and attention for watching this episode of the Nathan News Network. Let me know if there's anything that I missed or something that you'd like me to cover in my next news segment. Also, check out the links in the description below. I've got affiliate links down there and that's just a really nice way you can support the channel and help keep these videos coming. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode and I'll see you in the next one.